Hello, everybody. Hi. We happy are, Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> the new countdown doesn't give us any time. It really does not give us um, any time whatsoever. No, it doesn't. No. Three minutes was too long, and a minute's not long enough. Yeah, I know. It's like we got to find a happy medium. We're going to give it 10 seconds. <laughs> <that's> it. <laughs> 10 seconds. Um, hi. So before we get started, please, please, please share this video with your friends because Facebook shows it to nobody. nobody. <laughs> if you're seeing this, you're lucky. You're lucky because usually after the show, people will be like, I didn't know you were going live. I didn't know that I was. And they miss like a vast majority of content. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go back to doing the text alerts we used to do long mm -hmm. time ago, even though it costs, it's actually not cheap to do that, but we get more viewership that way. So we may have to uh, go to doing that text message that goes out maybe 10 minutes before showtime. Yeah, so know. He, he can see, like, I can only see, like, Facebook's um, participation. He has all the other ones. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes if someone asks a question and I don't see it, it's because it's coming from other sources. So we're not ignoring it, I promise. No, <laughs> I promise. No, because I see, I see the feeds come in from all the different Facebook pages and the YouTube channel. So I see yeah. everything on the where it's all coming together on StreamYard. So... Um, let me do oh, a little spiel. Wait a second. Um, also, uh, don't forget to tell us where you are watching from. Yes. And if you are watching the replay, make sure you type replay and where you're watching from anyway, That's regardless right. if it's live or not. So, all right, go ahead. Right. Hello, welcome to TMSM Weekly Live Show number 137 for March 18th, 2024. I'm Scott. I'm Michelle. And we've got a lot to catch up on. We've been gone for a couple of weeks. We have. Well, in fairness, we've been very busy. We have been. We've actually done a lot in addition to um, oh, the expo right. and other things. So I know we're going through here. We're trying to figure out, oh, we got to talk about this. we got to talk about this. we got to talk about that. Because we haven't talked to you guys in a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping that we're not going to be missing stuff, but we're going we're gonna to try to get there. We won't miss anything that's important to our minds right now. Right now. <laughs> Later, we may go, oh, crap, we missed something. But who knows. Um, but the first thing we want to talk to you guys all about was House of Mouse Expo 2024. Um, ended two weeks ago yesterday. Is that correct? Yeah, it's yes. been two weeks. Two weeks, wow. Um, so we didn't come back to you guys the Monday after the expo. We were exhausted. And still doing airport runs, still taking people, airport. taking our celebrities to the airport. And then last Monday, I was sick. So. Right. So we were playing catch up. So now we're finally back. So you guys get to see our smiling faces. You're welcome. <laughs> so do you want to uh, give them? So we have like we have like a plethora of topics today. So we're just starting mm -hmm. with House of Mouse. We have like lots to, to, to cover. So yes. do you want to give them a scenario, a quick rundown of what House of Mouse is all about this year? So House of Mouse, um, as you probably saw for months and months leading up to, or maybe you didn't because Facebook doesn't show it to many people. Um, but we were ramping up for our third ever House of Mouse Expo. It was at the Osceola Heritage Park Event Center in Kissimmee at 192 in the um, Turnpike area. Um, the venue was fantastic. It was really great to have such a larger venue. We doubled the size of the vendor floor. Um, which we really liked that we liked that we were doing that we had great panels all weekend we had a great after hours party on saturday night yeah, that, <laughs> that about 100 people or so attended it we also had some members of mickey mouse club there uh chase and dale um from mickey mouse club came and they had uh they had some of their people come there for a meetup type thing uh for mickey mouse club so it really helped have a great party that night with renee um keeping the music going um we had the panels were off the charts this year. I, I really think the panels came out. They were really they, funny they this were. year. So we had a panel that was um, Brett Island and Bill Farmer, Caitlin Rob Rock, who are Goofy Mickey <laughs> Mini. And that one actually got a lot of people were laughing. They were fantastic. They were going in and out of their voices, you know, doing all that good stuff. And then we had Jim Cummings, the voice of Winnie the Pooh, who did a panel with Terry McGovern who was Launchpad and Quack, among other things. Um, so the, the panels, like, um, they were all great. They were. They were great. And we've got the YouTube channel. We're going to be putting them all up on YouTube. The, the videos were very large because we recorded them in 4K. didn't realize that. So they're like 40 <laughs> gigabytes per video. So I'm going through, I'm editing them down, making them smaller so we can upload them. So most of them are up there. I just have to turn them on and uh, release them to the public. But um, I think we're missing two or three still. Um, Jeremy, if you get those over to me, we'll get those up and <laughs> get those up for you all. Um, but um, it'll be great to have those so you can go back and watch the recaps of them all. Michelle's panel, um, she did one Saturday did night at five. She insisted nobody was going to show up. It would just be her and the camera and Jason Marsden moderating. And we told her that she was wrong and we were right and she was wrong because there was a lot of people in that room um, who 
who walked away from there feeling well inspired, I think. Okay. I, I guess like it is it is it humble? It's like a humble brag to agree with you, right? Yes. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> we're going to share it, but I will tell you, I, as he was saying, I really was scared to do a panel. I didn't think people were going to show up, um, but they did. And I had a lot of people afterwards come and talk to me asking, you know, my advice about things or saying that the things that I talked about or wrote about or whatever really inspired them to try to reach a goal that maybe they had. And I will tell you it was the best feeling to know that what you say matters to people yes definitely and she talked about, we had some copies of her book at the uh front merchandise table after her panel the book sales spiked um, yeah people bought books and i was signing books and it was really really wonderful um ow um because it just it just was such a good thing and so sidebar so this already like, already <laughs> i have a point um it is very easy for me to give advice. And I'm sure a lot of you feel that same way. It's so much easier to tell somebody else what to do or inspire them or yeah, do this, do that. And then when you try to take your own advice, it's like, ugh. So I was watching part of my panel and some of the things I said, and I like literally got inspired by myself, which was, um, you know, to, to do more. Mm -hmm. So I like really, really want to do more now. Sorry, I'm getting my legs scratched up. It was scratching. It was um, 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 actually, what I'll do is after this show tonight, I'll put yours up, your panel up. Okay. Um, we'll we'll pub publicize it. That way, everybody can see it. You can get to see it. Sorry. Sorry. Somebody Okay. Just for me. Um, so, This yeah. is Ava, for those who don't know. This is Ava, Rescue Frenchie, who is very humane. Um, so, I really feel like um, I should be taking my own advice. Let's say that. Yep. So I basically um trying to think of how I can how I can do that. Um I need to finish my book. I need to finish do part two of moving the main Ava's being inspired right now. She can't stop <laughs> She's listening. Like whether I do like a girl power podcast or do like a lunch and I was talking to my friend Holly about um doing like a, a like an inspiration luncheon type of thing to where you know people that you know, they just need some encouragement. Because yeah. I really do think I have a lot of good things to say. I've got a lot of silly things to say. So. No, that's what I was telling her because she she actually tossed around the thing about possibly doing a podcast on her own to talk about different things and bring up topics each week and such. And I told her, I said, let's do it. I said, I can help her set it all up. She can go in the office, record it, and put it up on um, the different networks and have it up there for you to listen yeah. to it. So. Like, I need to do something. And I just feel like. like Holly said, do it. Of course she did. I, I guess I just kind of feel like I'm letting myself down and the people who followed me for all these years if I don't kick it up a notch. So I actually I learned I learned something. So I think I'm gonna try to do that. So hopefully next week at this time we'll have updates on what she's going to do. Okay, don't pressure me. No. Nope. <laughs> I just don't want to let the fire die. That's all. I know. So we gotta strike while your fire is burning that you want to do something more. Okay. But anyway, back to the expo. So um, we had a lot of amazing celebrity guests. Um, our staff was top notch, fantastic, they like they always are. Knocked it out of the park again. Out of the park yeah, again. I mean, we have some really great friends. I mean, I think we've told you guys um, that our expo staff are our friends and extended family that we count on. You know, the family that you choose, and they did an amazing job. They really did. We had a. We had most of the staff from last year was back. There was a few that couldn't make it due to different reasons. Um, but we did have Michael, who was new. Mike was new to our staff yes. this year. Uh -huh. He was working in the celebrity area, and he did a fantastic job. Um, just everybody came together, and they knew, I'm good at this. I'm going to go do this section. I'm going to go do this. Holly Holly was new because she didn't work with our staff last year. No, she, she was, was an, attendee. an attendee. So she was helping with Sarah at the front with Rory, and they were making sure everybody was checked in, got their badges, and got if they had a shirt or a bag. Andrew was doing merchandise. Andrew and Stella Fred was the run around everywhere. Chuck did the floor, um, took care of the vendors and everything on the floor. Corey and Ronnie were kind of whatever we needed at the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, like, um, and Claire, Karen, they were doing, like, running everywhere for us too and then um one of my best friends uh paula from michigan oh, came right. and surprised me so it was an exhausting weekend but i will tell you gina we, and jackie also and gina and jackie yeah, um we have great staff and i'm sure i'm forgetting 
people, but you're all amazing and we love you and we really appreciate you and we can't wait to do it again. So we're doing it again. So I guess Michelle just slipped and said that we will be doing this again, which I haven't pulled out my hair yet, but I guess that's what we'll be doing. I will tell you guys. So like the past couple of years we did this after the expo, he like was in a perpetual bad mood and like was hating life. And this year he was not, he was optimistic. I'll tell you what, Saturday, March 2nd, 10 minutes before we opened the doors, I was like, this is it. I'm done. I mean, I honestly, I was <laughs> not doing it again because just it's been very stressful the first two. Very financially stressful, uh, very stressful to make sure everything comes together, um, that I've done everything to make sure I didn't forget a step in the planning to make sure that I have um, things in place that will if something goes wrong, we have this to take over. And fortunately, like she said, I have an amazing staff that came to came to bat for me and everybody was there. Um, like she said, Chuck ran the floor. He kept all the vendors with whatever they needed taken care of. Greg was kind of like my, um, he had my back the entire time. Greg was putting out fires. Was putting out fires. <laughs> handle a lot. What, what him and Chuck tried to do is they tried to handle everything. And then if they needed me to come in later to make a big decision or whatever, they would wait till then. But they tried to address it rather than just, hey, Scott, go take care of this, Scott, take care of this. I was busy doing a lot of other stuff. So they, they really alleviated me from having all that stress on me. I don't know stress. <laughs> but, yeah, so basically, we, so, we could just praise our staff the whole hour. Yeah. Because our friends are the best, yeah. and we love you, and we couldn't do it without you. So, but we're going to do it again. Yeah, um, we're not sure where yet. Um, we don't know where. Or when. It'll be 2025. We just It'll be next year. year. Um, I personally was not happy with the venue. It was a great, great, it was a big place. It looked great on paper, but I didn't like the location. Um, we just want to, we want to do something closer and then have something with a hotel attached, like before, just make it a lot easier because all the transporting back and forth was a lot of work. Right. Yeah. But, really, yeah. So it was a lot of work for everybody involved. So hopefully, um, we can find a venue that can accommodate everything. We've already checked in one and the costs were absolutely outrageous. Um, so we, we're still looking. So I, I, I'm going to keep yeah. looking around, keep looking, uh, see what happens and who knows what the future holds. So, but, oh, that's uh, not good. but we are working on it. I'll just tell you that. And, and I think. This time we received a lot of positive feedback from a lot of people who are in the industry. Yes. Um, and that's people what that want to come back, like all yes. our celebrities, the pirates, uh, you know, our, our Disney voices, um, Jason Marsden, um, all these people want to come back. They believe in it. But even more so people who actually work in the industry, like Patty or yes. um, like yeah. one of uh, Lori's reps who was there, who he does event planning and such for other companies he works for. And he's like, this could be amazing. Let me get involved and help you guys. Uh, a friend of mine, Max, who does other conventions in Florida, um, messaged me. He's like, you got something great here. He goes, what do you need me to do to help you make this even better? He goes, I don't want anything from you. I just want to see this thing succeed. Um, so I have a lot of backing from people who, who they don't get any kind of nothing out of it but seeing this succeed at this point. And that's what I think I really needed. Like, um, and I think it's going to help me to push myself further to do something I've never done before. I, the convention is only at about 25% of my vision right now. What yeah. you saw. There's 75% more that's not even tapped yet. So if you saw what we did and you said, oh my God, this is amazing. That's only a quarter of what my idea is. Um, I just need time um, to make what I'm doing come to fruition. And I think it'll be fantastic once I get there. I had to clear my lap. Hopefully she doesn't dig a hole in my leg. I've been jacking so we can't pick him up. can't pick him up. He's too heavy. Um, but yeah, so wonderful people. I haven't, I can't read, so. What's that? No, everybody's just, everybody's they, they just loved it all. Yep, they were, airport runs were crazy. Uh, hotel would be in touch, would, would be a plus for sure. So um, Adam Wu, he showed up at the expo on Saturday. We saw him, me and Greg went and talked to him, and he was just there on his own. We did not. I he did uh, a whole video. We yeah. didn't even know he was coming. So no, we had no great. idea. Yep. And he just showed up. He paid his own way in. He didn't ask for anything. And Adam did a fantastic video and highlighted a ton of the vendors who were there that weekend um, to uh, help them out. So that was fantastic. And hopefully Adam will come back in the future. He said he liked what he saw. So I think I think we'll be back next year. Yeah. Us. So bigger and better next year. Just stay tuned. And thank you for the support. And we really appreciate it. We love you guys. We love our staff. We love our friends. We love everybody. We love everybody who supports us so thank you and we have a lot of ideas for next year a lot of theming and stuff like that so a lot of it we're, we're going to try to get a date as soon as possible because we want to put it out as early as possible so people can plan yes and then we can also let facebook not show it to anybody so the longer we have facebook <laughs> not showing it to anybody maybe more people will see it so we'll see what happens there but um 
yes, so that lots of work going into this. Um, I've learned a lot more this year. I've learned every year. And um, I, I know what I'm going to do this year to step up for 2025. So hopefully you guys will come along for the ride. Hopefully you guys will all want to make it. Um, and it's going to be a great, great show. Hopefully our staff comes back. We'll just cry and like. I need every one of you to come we'll back. We'll bribe you with food. <laughs> and, the, and the ones who couldn't make it, Lucretia Fernando. <laughs> okay. So anyhow. Um, so where do you want to start? Well, I'm trying to think. So we did the expo. We got back from the expo. Did we have any media events that week or we kind of off that week? Because we did airport runs and we did. And I was sick sick. So was sick, like sick. I am sick all the time, it seems. And, and it's not my fault. I've had COVID four times and, and it's affected my lungs and I get tired really, really easy. So um when we skip and I don't feel well, it's really legit. So I'm sorry. Yeah, about that. it's it's COVID really takes a toll on her. She can't climb stairs. She has a hard time with a lot of things like that. So when she is down a normal cold that lasts maybe two to three days, it lasts her two to three weeks. Um, no kidding, and not any better until the two or three weeks are up. So that's. So sorry about that. Yeah. Um, but I think this was the next event we did. Yeah. Okay. So not this, not yesterday. This weekend, last, sorry. But there was um, the D23's uh, 15 year anniversary celebration at Splitsville. Yes. Now they talked about this on their podcast um, uh, last week. Um, I think we, yeah, we recapped it on the podcast last On the live week. podcast show, which is Scott and Greg's podcast with a segment by me. And it's a hot mess. It's a lot of fun. You should really look into it. Live Lots of people who don't like podcasts are told us they listen to it every week because they like the banter. They like the jokes. They like me making fun of Greg. I mean, it just all comes together really well in there. But anyway, it was a lot of fun and we talked about it. So I'm trying to think about um, what we said. Now, okay, we're going to do good cop, bad cop, like positive and me. Okay. So it was it was sold out. Again, it was at Splitsville. Um, and if you've ever been to a D23 event, they are usually packed. Um, there's a lot going on. But for the 15, so it, it was it was it was a fun party. Let's say that. It wasn't a Disney party though. It was at Disney property. It was for D23, which is Disney's fan club. But it did not say Disney anywhere on the park. No, they didn't have characters. They didn't have like special Disney swag. They didn't. They didn't play Disney music. Um, it just it was like a a, a party at Splitsville for any occasion. Which was a fantastic party. I they, love Splitsville. They had tons of food. They had the bars open where you had to pay for drinks, but like soda and stuff like that was included with the price of the thing. You could bowl if you wanted to. We chose not to just because there was so many. 1,500 people um, bought tickets for the event, so it was really crowded. Um, they gave us swag where we got this um, Sorcerer Mickey uh, statue. So you had, we picked ours up ahead of time at Coronado Springs. Um, but our main thing, it was a madhouse outside, so our main goal was to get inside and get a table so that we could eat because that's important. Yes. So <laughs> that's what we did. We went right upstairs. We got a table. Um, we got our food. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of drinks. And then you could – they had like a, a DJ – in that area between um, Splitsville and uh, Everglades Donut, and then they were giving away like if you went over there, you got a little, a, a little tiny donut. Yeah, a little donut set. They were really good actually. I think we got and when I went the first time, you were given two because yeah. I went there multiple times, <laughs> and then when I went back later in the evening. They only one. gave us one, and then after we walked out, you can tell it was closing. They started giving people like loads of them, so I'm like, we should go back in. Yeah, we just didn't get, we didn't time the donuts right. But no. they were really, okay, so I love a good donut. I I, I do. I love donuts. I need a shirt. I love donuts. However. I'm going to buy that domain. I love donuts. I love donuts. Um, they were so sweet. What? Paula, Andy, bring the donut. Andy, the donut. Oh. <laughs> sidebar. Fine, I'm going to do a sidebar. So. So sidebar, so our, our good friend Andy, who kind of did a lot of photography for us at the expo, on Sunday morning, I was running somewhere, and I ran past the main lobby, and he goes, Scott, and he, he had a donut for me from Dunkin' Donuts, because he said I didn't eat enough the day before, because I didn't eat, and he's like, really, sweet, guy. really sweet, appreciate it so much, so he gave me my donut, he goes, I have one for Michelle, I said, do you want me to take her, he's like, no, I want to give it to her, I was like, okay, fine, so we did a live podcast show uh, Saturday and Sunday from the uh, vendor room stage, where uh, we opened up the day with that. So 
me, her, and Gregor head into the back of the office tent and such. We're back there. We're all talking. And I'm eating the donuts. She goes, where'd you get a donut? And I'm like, Andy gave me a donut. He's got one for you, too. But you have to wait till he comes in to get it. Well, Greg was the man yeah, with the, the, microphone man with the microphone for the entire uh, floor. So Greg gets on the microphone. And he's like, Andy, Michelle is here. She needs her donut. Come to the vendor room stage. Andy, we need Andy, the donut Andy now. Andy, the podcast stage. Bring the donut. I repeat, Michelle wants the donut. <laughs> So all of a sudden, Andy comes running down the aisle. You can almost hear the pitter patter of his feet, and he's running like Captain Jack Sparrow with a bag with a donut in it. With the donut. It was just the best. It's the little things in life, you guys. Okay, but anyway, back to Everlace. Um, I I know you love Everlace. Love Everlace. They're you know big like amount of sugar. And the, the donuts that they gave up were like mini versions, which they don't usually have. No. And I couldn't even afford even eat a whole mini version it was too sugary and sweet for me i like cake donuts yeah and they have yeast donuts and they're just like so much sugar but even a little tiny one was too much and they, they only had a small assortment they had just a basic one with like a frosting on it um then they had their cinnamon toast crunch one they had a coconut one they had the fruity pebble one um, i just got the chocolate can't remember if they had another one. the peanut butter explosion is my favorite one with the Reese cups on it and the peanut butter chips on it they didn't have that um, otherwise, what do you I, want for free? Otherwise, <laughs> I, would, I would have been in line, got my donut, got back in line while I was eating that donut, and that's all I would have done for three hours. It's, just there, it's too much. I like had a bite, and I'm like, okay, that's enough. I prefer like Dunkin' or Voodoo donuts. Which Voodoo we had two days yesterday. We did. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay, so um, D23 event, a little lackluster because there wasn't a lot of Disney going on. Mm-hmm. But I like to do like the food at Splitsville. I like their frozen drinks. So, um, man, it was, we had good company. We got to see a lot of people we knew. Um, so, yeah, it was a good non Disney Disney party. And can I say that tomorrow, for anybody interested in D23 fan event that'll happen in Anaheim this year, all the news is dropping tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? The 19th. Oh. So, watch for updates of that. There's going to be a lot of news coming out of D23, how you get tickets, what the, What's going to be involved? Who are the legends that are going to be inducted into the uh, Legends uh, Hall of Fame? They have lots of news. We were told almost everything will be coming out tomorrow for what you would need to know to attend D23. The, 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 yeah, the, it's not an expo. It's a whole fan event. Um, I actually was invited to go out there for the press conference um, in Anaheim, and I had to decline it because because it's, it's too far. Um, we couldn't drive there. We didn't have time, and she won't fly. So and we didn't. I, you keep saying- you don't I want to fly. fly. I'll say you don't want to fly. I don't fly. I just need to have preparations when I do. And we just spent a lot of money on the expo, so money's a little tight. That's true. It's a <laughs> broke, so there's that. Um, but anyway, so tomorrow, yeah. So watch our watch our social media mm-hmm. because um, all that information is coming. Do you know what time it is? Um, is there gonna be an online thing we can watch or? Well, I don't know. We'll have to find out. But as we get information, we'll be sure to pass it up along and put it on. Put it on um, the site. It'll be on social media. Um, also, just a quick sidebar: the site right now is down. Uh, our hosts, our site's been breaking for a few weeks here and there, and I have a temporary fix, and it works for a little bit, and then it goes back. I have the host working on it right now, so hopefully, it's going to be up sometime tonight. Um, but if you go there and the site's down, we know we're well aware of it. It's being we know. So we're, sorry. Yeah, it's we're sorry. Yeah, it's always something. It is. So I kind of got a little lippy with our host, so we'll see what happens. You get lippy. I was very adamant that i told them if they don't get this fixed i'm leaving so and we've been i'm taking my choice and i'm going home. i've been i've been with them for 12 years spent a lot of money with them to host me okay no, no tangent no, tangent. no I'm, I'm fine okay I'm fine i'm good you're good okay um all right so in um cool. non-disney news uh last week we were invited to go to aquatica uh for the press event for their newest water slide called Tassie's Underwater Twist. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so so it's funny because um, they explained it and everything that you know is going on, whatever, um, with the slide. But it, you go down a tube, and then you're in a big bowl, all right? And they call it a super bowl. Some might call it a toilet bowl. I was trying not to. Um, so when you're in the super bowl. Not that Super Bowl, but the Super Bowl. There's there's projections 
inside the bowl. It's really cool. And so it's supposed to be like um, the Australia Shark Bay. Yes. So you see like a shark or a whale or whatever. Turtle. And you're spinning around, spinning around, you're seeing all the, the wildlife, whatever, and all of a sudden, whoosh, you're out. You get flushed out. You get flushed. So Greg wrote it for us. <laughs> um, and Greg wrote it the first time. Greg got off it. He wasn't that wet. His hair was barely wet at the bottom. Yeah. Looks fine. Greg went on again. <laughs> he got dumped. <laughs> Greg got dumped and soaked. His hair was, he had just done his hair, so it was like really bright blue. <laughs> it was kind of, um, but yeah, so then <laughs> he said you literally get flushed. You do get flushed. So I did. I recorded two segments for Fox 35 last week, and one of them was on Aquatica. So when I do these interviews, I talk to Marlisa, the anchor that does the segments with me first, and I was trying to explain to her like, okay, so it's like a big toilet, and you get flushed. So I was trying, and she was like, oh, okay. I said, but I don't want to say toilet or toilet flush. She goes, well, you can if you want to. <laughs> No, because I, I want to be able to cover things other than Disney, and I don't want to start off out the gate with like calling their new slide a big toilet bowl. Basically, if you remember the commercials from the 80s, the Tidy Bowl Man, that's what Greg kind of was. And the blue liquid that comes in to clean your toilet bowl. With his oh, my God. If his hair would have ran, though, that would have been hilarious. I'm going to bring that up on the podcast. Jesus. He's the one said you literally get flushed. You do, but I would say when you sometimes when you have to cover events or talk about things, it's challenging if there's only certain words or only so many ways you can describe something. Let's just say that. Like what happened to you on the radio with birthday celebrations? Yeah. Okay. So, in? <laughs> and there's a reason. Okay. So another sidebar. So I talk to Marlisa ahead of time and tell her what I'm going to talk about just so I'm um, <laughs> just so I'm, uh, you know, just so we can do the segment. She knows what I'm going to talk about. Well, when I did a few years back, I did a radio when I was in the studio at the radio for WBO. So Joe Kelly is the anchor that I worked with and I would go in every Wednesday morning and I would tell him this is what we're going to talk about. Um, and then he was, a, he's a wild man. So he would always throw me off. And so it was when Mickey and Minnie got new outfits for the 90th, for their 90th. Yeah. So yeah, wild enough. And I said, Disney's calling them celebration suits. They don't want you to call them birthday suits because here we got it, obviously. So Joe agreed. he's like, okay. gotcha. All right. So when the orange light comes on in the radio studio, that means you're alive. There's no going back. So what does he say to me? He goes, well, tell me about these new birthday suits that Mickey and Minnie got going on or whatever. And he kept saying birthday suits. So, like, that's why I like to preempt things because I don't want it to sound like I just a mess. It was the best video, though, because I used to take the segments when she would do them. I'd record them. And the look on her face is Joe says, tell me about these new birthday suits. Oh, so Mickey and Mickey are in the birthday suits. And so I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, I just told you not to say that. And she's, like, mouthing me. I'm like, I told you not, told to, you say not to say that. So, yeah. So, so there's a reason I do what I do. <laughs> Greg, wow, Mickey and Minnie birthday suits. Get that vision out of your head. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be like that. Paula put mine the B-Pips. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. I, did, I did see something here. Leslie said that I wanted to pinpoint about Holly, um, that Leslie had left her purse behind and Holly saved the day, found her purse, put it under the table until she came back and gave it to her. Oh, back. So she was her hero of that day. So good job, good job. Holly. We appreciate do have a those. good staff. We do. We appreciate people pointing out those things because we can praise our staff till we're blue in the face, but when somebody else says it unwarranted, it's great. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. See, Holly? Yay. All right. Um, okay, so the back so we talked about the Super Bowl. <laughs> And the flushing bowl. And the flushing. Um, but yeah, it, it's really cool. And one thing about Aquatica, um, I know everybody's looking for ways to save money mm -hmm. right now because, you know, our economy is crap. People can't afford, you know, groceries, gas, rent. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking for some place cost efficient, let's say, and you want to take your kids to a water park, I do recommend Aquatica because it's a beautiful park. It's big and it's very affordable. It's actually my favorite water. I've never been to Volcano Bay, but of all the water parks we've been to, including Typhoon Lagoon, Blizzard Beach, Aquatica is my favorite. Hands yeah. down. It is, it's, there's a big beach area with sand everywhere. There's 
they have they don't have a lazy river they have a fast river it's a not lazy it's a non lazy river that kind of pulls you around. i think they also have the slower one but that one kind of um pulls you around really quick you gotta be on your toes literally you or you're gonna get like washed um, away the okay. slides there are great it, it's it's just a really good affordable park um that i really enjoy going to and if you if you never wonder if you've ever wondered should i give a product give it a try sure, sure. um i think you'll like it um a lot better and it's sometimes it's not as busy as the other ones yeah so and you oh. can get annual pass really cheap okay and so i think this is a good segue um because like you know we love we love disney of course um that's our main job but because of pricing and you know average family is looking for things to do and whatnot um we're kind of like trying to point out other things that people can do in the orlando area um that maybe won't break the bank quite as much right. i mean there is other things than disney here i know it's shock right but aquatica is a good one but um i wanted to talk about um universal's mardi gras because yes. that's what we did this weekend, almost Saturday and Sunday. And I don't know if you guys have ever done um, Mardi Gras season at Universal. We, um, the parade alone is awesome. Oh so it was like- So long, I had no idea it was that big of a parade. They had these big, like bedazzled floats and there's a ton of, how many were there? There had to be 10 to 11, at least. Because every time we thought there'd probably be no more, there was another one that pulled up. And then the last one is an alligator float, which is actually three floats long. It's a big old alligator. Um, and every float has people on them throwing beads to the crowd mm -hmm. um, throughout. The music is playing. They have dancers. They have entertainment everywhere. Still walkers. Still walkers. Um, so, yeah. Um, if they used to do it, I believe they pick at random, like who gets to go on the floats. Mm -hmm. But they have dining packages yeah. to where, like, you can actually, when you sign up for the, the package, you get to be one of the, you know, the families that are up right. throwing the beads. Um, the only, there was beads flying everywhere. And, like, um, and you know what? It's pretty crazy. Like, people, like, diving in front oh of God. each other to grab the beads. I almost got taken out by a little girl. They're just little cheap beads, but everybody <laughs> wants them. And then we're after the parade, we're walking through the store, and some people, do you want to make a donation to my bead collection? I know, but you know, like fifty on his neck. He looked like Mr. T. He did. And he then I went and went, no, these are my beads. I got my twelve. <laughs> mine. Um, but one thing, so you know, I always got to complain about something. Um, if you're if, work of the wise or a piece of advice, if you are the people on the floats that are chosen to throw beads. Throw the beads, because a lot of them are just standing there looking at you. And people are like, here, here, here. And they just, or they'll take one and throw it, and there's like and 87 wait, people waiting wait to get beads. Wait five minutes to throw another one. It's I like, could not believe that. Some of them were all, some of them had them on their arm. You could just tell they were just doing it like this. One yeah, throw another. the great. freaking beads. That's yeah. what people are here for. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they get paid for more beads they bring back. It was not. Like for real. And there was a little girl that had mercy on me because I'm standing there waiting and this little girl smiled at me and she the girl was on the floor. Yeah, little girl. And she was she she was like this and she threw it to me and I caught it and I said, Thank you. And she's like, You're welcome. So one kid had mercy on me. <laughs> I wasn't about to get I was not about to get tackled for plastic beads. She was at your panel waiting of course, so she got three <laughs> beads. So she her goal was to be a bead thrower at Mardi Gras. I think she accomplished it after watching your panel. I'm saying, if it were me up there, I'd be I'd be throwing beads left and right, like beads for all. Beads for all. Like if, if there's if these people are standing on the side of the float and it's part of the fun, but I will tell you, you get very caught up. Like by the second float, you're you're like in it to win it. Oh, everybody got it. <laughs> people, people you would never think would be excited about beads. I mean, you see the guys who they look like the. They're the biker guy, and they're all covered in <laughs> tattoos. They're all muscular, and they walk up, beads, give me the beads. I mean, it was just, it was People crazy. People wanted to throw down for some It was. I, I wanted to see somebody like body slam each other. <laughs> That's my pink beads. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, actually. Mardi Gras is great. Um, lots of food options. We did try the beignets. We, they have beignets. Yes. And they were messy. Messy as all get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But they were delicious. It was like what six dollars for a bag of beignets? I think it was five something. Yeah, maybe it was five ninety five or six ninety five. They weren't that 
expensive. Yeah. Actually, the food at Universal is not as expensive as Disney food. No, and we noticed that a lot over the weekend because um, we were at um, just the different restaurants and such we went to. It was like yeah. usually about twelve dollars to fourteen dollars for a meal, um, which it's it's park food. It's park chicken tenders and fries, or it's but you got larger portions. I noticed. And if you don't want to eat park food, you have City City Walk right there with a lot of food choices. Mm -hmm. It kind of like you know what it kind of reminds me of is Disneyland. How they have yes. Downtown Disney here and then the parks here. Well, they got this, so it, you can walk from park to park or stop at a restaurant. So um, that's what it's like at Universal. Yeah, it, yeah, it's very much like that. You go through one security area and then you're in the city work, city walk and the parks after one security yeah. check. Um, but like she said, there's lots of restaurants there. There's a lot of their sit down really nice restaurants and then there's music, a lot of walk-ups um so yesterday was st patrick's day and i was i was talking talking to him um was it yesterday i don't remember i'm really tired uh that i have not gone out for st patrick's day since our last year at home and i met my friend paula at an irish pub and um with her mom and we sat around and, you know, with like green tiara and the beads and all that. I don't drink beer, so I didn't have green beer. You had but a green Long Island yesterday. I didn't get there yet. Oh, sorry. I had a green Long Island yesterday. But um, we haven't been out to celebrate or to do thank or Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Which is really not. So living in Michigan and living here, it's not really as hyped up here as it was back in Detroit. But I think because there's not a lot else going on. You were talking place. about that too. Like at back home, um, all the Irish bars in the area, like they'll have tent parties mm -hmm. outside. Um, there's a St. Patty's Day Parade downtown Detroit. Um, it's a whole thing of stuff to do. Right. I know and, Chicago does something big too. Cause they're, they're well, they, the they dye the river they dye green. green all that stuff. So, yeah, they. Um, it was different doing it here. But I will tell you. I had the best day yesterday. I had so much fun. It was a lot of what? What do no, you think? No, I'm listening to you about your great day. I, I, I did have a great day. So we met um, friends at work. And now, mind you, we've had this plan since like January. Yeah, a long time. Because um, we were doing the concert series and um, so my friend Mel and I, two years ago, we went to see Zed, who is DJ that does the techno music, the EDM stuff, um, to at uh, Tampa at the Hard Rock. So we saw him there, and we had such a good time. We were like, okay, we're making a path that anytime Zed comes to town, we're going. So he, when we found out he was going to be there, we made a plan, right. um, and we had to follow through that plan. So. Before the concert, we met at, there's an Irish bar, Finnegan's. Finnegan's. There's an Irish bar where we got green things to drink. Like I said, I had the Long Island. And then they bought us, um, oh my God. So they bought us these shots. Pickleback. So like he doesn't drink, so he just, he, he just, you know, spectates. So whenever I'm out with Mel and Ronnie and they turn around and smile and say, here, drink this. It's just like my friend Paula and my friend Michelle can vouch for this. Both like, here, drink this. It's great. It's sweet. You're going to love it. Um, they don't say anything. Ronnie just is like, here. I'm like, what is it? He goes, just drink it. Don't smell it. Or drink this one first. Drink this one second. Yes. <laughs> so she didn't mess it up. It was the most disgusting thing. So it was Jameson whiskey. And I didn't know what I had. Jameson with, one cup. With Tabasco. Tabasco. I didn't know. Yeah. Was that in the picture? It was, was in the whiskey. Oh. And then they gave you a, like a, a chaser. It was pickle juice. My entire esophagus was burning. Now, anybody knows who ever has ever bought Michelle a shot to drink <laughs> anywhere, she can't do a shot. Mm -mm. She can't. She can't do the full shot at one time. She has to do it in parts, which makes it worse because... Usually you want to do the shot as quickly as you can. Or I'll plug my nose. Yeah. But I couldn't because I had the chaser. <laughs> <laughs> the pickle juice station. So it was absolutely positively disgusting. And I couldn't understand. Now, mind you, it's always good to ask questions because I, <laughs> my, my eyes were like 
tearing, my nose was running. Everything from here to here was on fire. And I'm like, what was that? Oh, I forgot to tell you, they put Tabasco in there. No. Well, Tommy said that was new. He had never had it like that either. It was disgusting. And they're like, here, drink this afterwards. And it was pickle juice. I do not recommend ever drinking that. Ever. So no picklebacks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, anyway, I thought that was a big sidebar. Disgusting. Um, so we ended up going around and, you know, we had some drinks and we went on some rides. And then um, Scott and Ronnie left us girls to our devices. <laughs> and um, we ended up at the concert area. So I don't know if you guys have ever been to the concerts at Universal, but they're, they have like the big like big stage, stage and screens and whatever. And then there's a huge area. So it's way different than Disney. And I did want to add in though, like Disney though, the concerts are included in the normal park admission. You don't have to pay anything extra yeah. for the concerts there. Um, where some parks like SeaWorld has free concerts also, but there's an upgrade if you want to pay, you can get better seating. For their concert series universal it's the same price it's just you get there earlier if you want to be closer to the stage yeah and, and it's it's like it's like a real concert mm -hmm. it's just huge so and they have really good guests like we've talked about this before um so we got in there around what six six thirty uh, yeah around that time and um so we ended up sitting sitting on the fake grass waiting for for zed and um you went and sat down um, and it got dark and then like the lights went down and it was like, seriously being at like a stadium show or something. Yeah. And, um, I will tell you, if you go look at my Facebook stories, Instagram, you can see clips of the show. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I have not had that much fun at a show in a long time. Now I love EDM and dance music and like watching a concert was like driving in the car with me. Like it's all the stuff that I listen to. So we we jumped and danced the whole time. I don't know how I'm walking today. So <laughs> I know, I don't, it's a, that's not my music that I'm into. It's I'm into not it. a thing. I knew every single song that he played because of her. And he played for that one. I knew every single song that came across that, that stage that night. Um, but it was good, it was entertaining. I was watching, um, I had to sit, um, I was having some issues. But I sat and I watched it from afar, and it was a good, it was entertaining. Um, everybody seemed to have a great time. The the crowd, everybody's like, oh, is the crowd bad? Is it this? The crowd seemed all into it. They were all pleasant. And everybody, everybody was nice. Yes. I didn't get shoved. There was no fights. Everybody was polite. It was such a good vibe. Beth, it was Zed, um, DJ Zed. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like DJ Z. Z E D D. Look him up; he's fantastic. He works with a lot of artists. Though. A yeah. lot. So they had him up like the DJ platform, but then they had what would you call the the graphics and the screen? Oh yeah, they had screens. So they had a screen behind him with different different uh, graphics behind it. Then they had screens on both sides of the stage with graphics. Then they had two more screens that were kind of at the back of the area. For anybody who couldn't get close to watch what was going on that's kind of where i was watching it from and it was clear as day you could see everything but then they had the smoke machines they had the the uh confetti machines they had the confetti, confetti bombs at the end so the last the last song they did was one of his biggest and i've never seen so much confetti no it looked like it was <laughs> raining confetti um and it, it just but i was standing there waiting for them to come out because they were in their area i was outside of it and i'm just watching everybody come out of it. that was so awesome that was fantastic and he did an hour and a half performance they they start a half an hour before the park closes, and usually they say most of them do 45 minutes to an hour. He did an hour and a half, um, and um, he really did well. He did a really good job. The only thing that stinks about uh, Universal as opposed to other, like Disney's concerts, where Disney does a concert, and you get three concerts by that artist that day. Yeah. Universal, it's one day, one show. That's it. And then, so, so they put up barriers early in the day, um, so if you want to go and stake your spot early, but there really wasn't a bad spot because of the screens and like they, they had like the, the pyro and the smoke and the whole thing. It was quite a production. It was quite a production. That's what I was watching more is the production of putting it all together. Cause that's kind of like with the expo. I watched the production of it all coming together, put the show together. Um, but that was pretty cool the way they did that whole thing. With and the, you know, he, he knew not to, he's like, have fun because he knew that I was in my element and having like the best time. So Sarah says we need Zed for home after party. We can't afford Zed. I love that so much. 
So Sarah will be paying for the bed. It's going to be probably millions for that. You know, but it, we can we can play some of his music. I think that's a fair um, trade off and a lot cheaper. <laughs> oh, you can play a lot cheaper. But anyway, so. And then at uh, City Walk, they're, they're, they have Pat O'Brien's, which is on the second level. Um, and they had a, a band out there. They had the green lights going. They had music. They had a DJ um, when the band was playing. So yes. And um, I really, like, I'm just saying, I know back in the day we used to joke and people would be like, oh, the dark side. It's not. It's not. It's Universal, really not, yeah. guys. Universal. One thing I will say about Universal they take care of their pass holders. They take care of all their guests. It's not, they're not catering just to the tourists who are coming in um, from out of town. They're catering to everybody the same. So it doesn't matter where you're from. You're going to get the same type of service level. And you know um, what else You don't think people edgy and mad. No, people were happy because I think they're drinking. Maybe. But I know sometimes you go to Disney and people are like, I have spent a lot of money to be here. Blah, blah, blah. You don't get a lot of that at Universal. Everybody's just happy to be there. They don't care. And it's oh, nice. It is nice. <laughs> and um, if you're if you're annual pass holder, there's lots of benefits to being that there. Like um, if you're if you're the top tier, um, you get preferred parking, including in the price of admission. You get uh, express pass after four o'clock. Yeah, um, <laughs> how nice is that? It, um, it's part it's, of the pass. It's part of the pass. So if you got the top pass, so we have the top pass at Disney, and the top pass at Universal. The differences between the two, first off, Universal's is half the price. True. Sure. For, and that's for a two park after hour or after four o'clock express pass, uh, preferred parking or free valet parking, yeah, a free HHN night, yeah, for Halloween Horror Nights, plus the discounts. You get better discounts at the restaurants. But if you go up to a uh, one of the little snack carts and you buy a popcorn, you buy a soda, you get a discount, get a discount. at the pass holder. Like where, where Disney, you only get a discount, Disneyland, you get that, Disney World, you don't, yeah, so and, and you know. One thing is nice about the front of the line after four, because you can actually go on rides. Now, you know, they have that garbagey Genie Plus, which I hate at Disney. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate Genie Plus? I don't think you've ever said that before. I think it's the worst decision ever. Um, and you're paying for it. And you're already Every spending time. so much money at Disney as it is. And now you've got to pay to go on the rides you want to go on. That is just garbage. They don't do that at Universal. Sorry, I'm... Crabby. But um, they, it's just all I'm going to say is that it's a really great option. And, you know, when you come to the, you know, Central Florida, Disney is not the only game in town. They're not. And it's actually more affordable and a really more so laid back. Atmosphere. Yes. And if you're interested in going to Universal, actually, Becky, um, our travel sponsor, I mean, I must man travel, they actually do Universal as well. So if you do want to just come to town and you don't want to go to Disney, say you do want to just go to Universal for a few days, they can help you with the, the hotel over there. They can help you with the tickets over there. They can do all that as well for you, just like they do for Disney. It, she can do travel for any place, anywhere in the world. Um, so if you are interested in that, reach out to me. I'm not going to travel. They'll help you. That wasn't an advertisement. I'm just letting you guys know that's an option, so you don't have to do all the work yourself. They know how to get it for you. Absolutely. So, and then so, at Christmas time. Okay. Oh, no, I was just going to say, the other things about Universal, though, is their Christmas parade that they do every day. Up until Christmas, once it starts. Oh, like it's like the Macy's it's Thanksgiving Macy's. or the Christmas yeah. floats. So. They get some of the Macy's Day balloons that come to their park, mm -hmm. though, from the actual parade that's on Thanksgiving in New York. They bring some of those balloons down there for, to, to do the parade. They it's Grinchmas? Just, Grinchmas, where we, we did see the Grinch when we were there with Halloween Greg for that one event we went to a couple months ago. Um, the Grinch was great. Um, yesterday, we were walking through Seuss Land, and they had a bunch of the characters there doing yeah. a meet and greet. And the lines aren't obnoxiously long. You don't need a fast pass to go meet the people. You can just go up, take your picture, get. So I'm not bashing Disney, but it's just nice to have that other option that seems like they seem to care more about the guests. And that is nothing on a cast member at Disney because the cast members are the only reason I keep going to Disney because they're the only thing that makes Disney great still. You still get really great service from cast members yes. at Disney, so it's not about that. It's about affordability. It's affordability and what they're giving to the to the thing. And JPEG said it years ago that he did not care about pass holders, which really upset a lot of people in yeah, Central okay. Florida. Um, that Because we go to the parks weekly, and it's, you're not even spend worried about it because you know we're going to spend the money. And the fact that their parks are twice as much, that they're – busy that you got to pay extra to ride a ride that you got to do all this stuff it's like come on 
think about what you're doing here. And an epic universe, I think, is going to give them a run, a little bit of a run for this. Yeah. So I did an I did an interview last week. I've been busy um, for the Orlando Sentinel, and what uh, they were wanting an honest opinion, and I, I really try to do that, um, but kindly. You know, there's a way that you can say things without sounding mean. Um, and one of the things that, so I guess it was probably a week and a half ago, maybe longer. So um, Bob Iger, they had that meeting, yes. and he said, um, you know, all these blue sky concepts. Well, we could do this. We could add a park. We could blah, blah, blah. We could, we could, we could. And they did that for the D23 announcements in 2022. Blue sky. Uh, they call them blue sky concepts. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it could. But then you have Universal, who's not blue skying it. They're doing it. And I was asked about that um, for this article in the Sentinel. And uh, what, in my opinion, I think that people don't want to see. I think one of the reasons people get gets mad at Disney is because for how much we pay, they don't. They don't rush on anything. No. And I really think that, you know, Disney needs to come up with something because the Epic Universe um, is going to give them a run for their money when it opens next year because it's huge. They have posters. They, it's a whole big theme park um, in addition to what they already have. And um, I really hope that Disney does take notice. Yeah. Um, Brandy made a perfect point here because JPEG said the same thing about DVC. The DVC and the annual pass holders are basically how they pay for these parks all year long. And he, I, JPEG said the same stuff about DVC. And he said they took away a lot of the perks. But the problem, he says, is Iger is not bringing them back like he promised he was going to. And he hasn't yeah. reinstated a lot of stuff that Bob JPEG took away from us as Disney fans, which is sad. Um, I, I hope that what my hope is, is that Epic Universe makes Disney sit there in the boardroom and say the oh crap moment. Like, they need to. We need to get moving here. Stop bragging that you could build another park. Stop bragging that you can build this. Stop building resorts for crying out loud. Because all resorts do is bring more guests into parks that are already overcrowded. And they're already overcrowded. Um, I, I just, I don't know what the answer is, but I tried to be very honest when I gave that interview because I do think that Disney needs to take notice because living here in Central Florida, a lot of people are very excited about this new theme park. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. And then also SeaWorld is in every year SeaWorld's been adding a ride. Adding new rides. So it's like everybody's doing all this stuff and there's Disney going, well, we updated the banners on this and we took Splash Mountain and we changed it over to this, but it's still Splash Mountain. Yeah. Um, it's like, come on, give us something new. Toronto was the newest ride took you five years. So same with Guardians. You know, same with Guardians. It took forever. It's like, don't say you're going to build another land. Don't say you're going to build this unless you intend to really do it. Animal <laughs> Kingdom. If you go back to where Chester and Hester's was back there, it looks like a bulldozer came through that area. And oh, it used to be sad. at a time Disney would hide that. You wouldn't see that. They put up those 30-foot drapes that made it look you like the wall. You could never see where construction was or what was going on. They always hit it. And it's almost like they don't care. They, they don't care. <laughs> we were at Epcot a couple months, about a month ago in the UK Pavilion, and they were fixing the backside of the buildings that you can see as you walk up from where International Gateway is. Yeah. Kind of. And they didn't even have anything there. You just saw the scaffolding and you saw the guys working. And it's like, that is not how Disney did it for years. No. And it's like, why now? I mean, I don't know. Disney's just made a lot of changes that have upset a lot of the true Disney fans. And the people who come once a year or twice or once every two years, they don't see those little things that annual pass holders, DVC members, people who live here go off and see. And it's just frustrating. It so is. I just, I really think that there's so many people, including myself, that is a longing for old disney mm -hmm. like not all this corporate greed bs like you know like get back to your roots and your fans and the people that love disney and love disney for all the right reasons like this is these are it's nostalgia it's characters and movies that we've grown up with it's childhood memories and you know trying to make memories for your children um you know it's just nostalgia I, there's something to be said for nostalgia because mm -hmm. it can make you you know, nostalgia will make you spend more money than what the newest ride is. It is. And I think that because of that nostalgia, like people like myself who have been a Disney fan since I was a little girl from as long as I can remember. Um, I think the reason I, I still love it and I still keep going back is because I have hope. 
you know, um, that they are going to make some positive changes or maybe just not change so much. Right. Yeah. Don't make all these blanket changes across the board. And then we're all sitting there going, what the heck did you guys just do? You broke everything. And that's one of the reasons we created House and House Expo. Yes. We were at D23 and I'll say it, I called it a commercial for Disney. Mm -hmm. And if you've been there, that's really all it is. It's, it's Disney uh, promoting, which I get it. They're promoting the one year with Disney Plus was ever they promoted yeah. when they had Marvel Studios, they promoted the Star Wars. And I love that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing the Marvel Studios booth and what they're doing in there. I love seeing the Lucasfilm booth and seeing what they're doing in there. But the whole convention is all about commercial. commercial for it's everything not business. about community. It's not yeah. about fans getting together. It's and not a fan event. I it's don't, not a fan event. No. And they say it is, and it's not. Having been to the last three, I don't think it's a fan event. And, and some of our colleagues have told us also they don't like the, the path that it's going down. Um, uh, and hopefully, and now there is no D23 Expo. The Expo part of it is it's gone. It's an ultimate fan event now. But so we'll see how that goes because there's announcements tomorrow. Yes. But anyway, I do, to wrap things up because we're about out of time. Um, I just think that a lot of people just want to have those old feelings again. I agree. I agree. And Iger said he was going to do that. We're still waiting, Bob. So. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I don't want things to take in the wrong way because I know some people will be like, oh my God, they bash Disney. We're not. We're not bashing Disney. We're telling you the reality of what Disney is doing currently. And what people are saying. And what people are saying because we get a lot of – and that's the whole thing is a lot of people don't go to Disney and complain or they don't go to Disney and say what the problems are. They might complain. Oh, I dropped my ice cream on her. I didn't like this at rate. I didn't like that. They complain about the little problems. And Disney doesn't care. Here, here's another ice cream bar. Here, here's a stuffy for your kid, a plush. Take it home and you'll be fine. It's – Disney is going to change when people stop spending their money on Disney. When the hotels aren't at 100% capacity, people at Disney will make changes. When the parks aren't solidly packed with people buying the Genie Plus Genie. to get in line for a two-hour ride or for a two-hour line wait that lasts 90 seconds or like seven dwarfs, which is what, a minute and a half, two minutes. You wait all that time and it's over so quickly, but people are still spending the money to come to the gate. They're still spending the money on the food. They're still doing all this stuff. Why would Disney change? Anybody in business would tell you if the money's coming in, you don't ever have to change. Oh. And it's the truth. But until people start speaking with their pocketbook, Disney's not going to, if anything, they're going to keep charging us more because they're going to see how far they can get away with it until they're back. Now, there's some people that will go no matter what and they charge is, them, no matter what they do. And, you know, it is what it is. But we, have, I still have hope. But in the meantime, there are other theme parks you can go to in the area that are more affordable and you're going to have just as much fun. And so this will probably be the last time we're on Disney's media list. So we'll have to go back to doing things the way we used to do it, where we just go cover it and get it out there. So, But the one thing Disney has always told us as media um, invites and things for them as partners, they want us to be honest. And that's what we're doing. We're being it's completely 100% honest. honest. I love the cast members. The cast members make the magic. It's not about the ride. It's, it's corporate not decisions. It's, yeah, it's the corporate bad. decisions and how to make more money for a company that's already making a fortune. I mean... They said they lost all this money, but then Disney Plus got launched. I know, we got to get started. So they make a fortune, they make more money, and we just keep giving it to them. And I think that needs to stop. Give it to Universal, give it to SeaWorld, give it to Lego in. Let them do something with it. Make it better. What? Gator. Are you done? Okay. Oh my gosh. Geez, usually. And it's, no. Usually it's me that goes off on a tangent. Because I'm just very, I'm tired of the corporate career. And there's a lot of that, though. It's a, it's not just Disney. There's a lot of companies that, you know, yeah. it's just. Greg wants to give me a hug. It's just diff a different vibe at Universal, and they've gotten so much better. So, so much, much better. better. So much it's better. not what it used to be. So if you haven't gone in a while, give it a chance. Yeah. Or like a product of, Or, you know, I don't like Lego Land. I don't know where that came from, but. Well, Sarah said that look you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> See, and Randy said, he goes, the fact that we do not pass along rumors is a tribute to y'all keeping it real. And we don't. We don't do rumors. There's too many sites out there that do rumors, and that's how they make all their money because people click on those articles, they read what it is, and it's never truth. Sorry. Oh, my God. What's wrong with you? Are I'm you, stopping. Are you going. hungry? No, I'm done. He's hungry. <laughs> Gina said she agrees with me, and she loves me. Thank you, Gina. Love you, too. <laughs> I haven't lived with them. <laughs> I've had issues with the website before, so I've kind of been a bitter mood right now. <laughs> and I said that. I said because you're having problems with our website, you're going to be all hostile. And lo and behold, awesome. Greg's bringing me a Snickers. He said, Benny he White needs a Snickers. He needs a Snickers. All right, anyway. Whatever, Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are ending our show now. Um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed our little hour of crazy. 
And um, I know it was a little bit all over the board and not just Disney, but that's kind of what we want to be, you know, we just talk about other things as well. Yep, talk about what's going on in the world, not just always be uh, pigeonholed to Disney and what's going on at Disney. So right. I think it's better. Um, so tomorrow we record for the live podcast show. Um, and that'll be out on Wednesday morning as long as we don't go off the rails and Greg takes forever to edit it because we go <laughs> way off the rails and it takes a long time for him to edit it. Uh, but make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast um, channel you use to the live podcast show. I um, think you guys will enjoy it. Michelle, we're going to work on her uh, podcast um, that I think I think will be fantastic. And um, I'm going to get that going for her so she can record that. We can get that up and maybe it'll inspire other people to do great things. Yeah, I got to figure that out because I don't know if i could talk to myself for all this but you, and maybe you, I could. you could and, and i told her i'm so proud of her because when she did the panel and she didn't think anybody would show up and they did um but she talks with her emotions during that panel and jason was a fantastic moderator for that i could not think of anybody better to do that because he knows her he knows her heart and he was able to bring the things out of her that he wanted to and he, he really believes in all the stuff that I do and thinks it's pretty cool. So we will put that out so you can watch it. Um, and we have other videos to show this week. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. Um, make sure you're following the Main Street Mouse on all our social media channels. And sometimes they're not going to show it to you, so you'll actually have to physically go look. <laughs> <laughs> but um if you don't see us for a day it's not because we it's get not because we're not trying um but anyway if you guys have a great week and thank you again for everything and we will see you real soon see you guys thank you bye. see you next week bye